since the beginning of Linux and our packaging systems. Debian has packaged everything that OpenSUSE has packaged, that Arch has packaged, that Ubuntu has packaged, that Gentoo has packaged, that Fedora has packaged, that Alpine has packaged, and all of these other distros, all packaging and repackaging the exact same software, sometimes to apply patches like security patches or backport different things, sometimes to deal with different dependency issues, and sometimes it's packaging the exact same code base just into a format for that distro-specific package manager. But it doesn't have to be like this, and the distribution model is changing. This was written in response to Red Hat dropping maintainership of the LibreOffice RPM, but not just written in response, praising the decision and encouraging more distros and more applications to be handled exactly like this. But the main point isn't about LibreOffice, it's more about this general shift over to more containers on the desktop. Now for context, George isn't just some random person saying things with no idea what he's talking about. He is the developer of Ublue, Universal Blue, and he's also heavily involved in Flathub and has done talks about it with Robert McQueen, the GNOME board president. Now, George knows a lot of people are not going to want to hear this, but I'm going to say it nonetheless. I've been talking for a while now about the economic benefits of aligning our desktop distribution models with that of cloud. He's also a big cloud guy, talks a lot about cloud native, which is basically nerd speak for containers on the desktop. After all, if a certain model is being way more successful than the others, then the hard part is figuring out how to leverage that for the desktop. If you do the napkin math, it's clear why Canonical moved to the Snap model for Firefox. It's too expensive. That means the deb is too expensive. There's no reason to have an entire body to do nothing but bring a browser to your OS. This is a really hard job because you're not doing it just for the current release. You're the poor soul that has to do all the backporting stuff for older releases. Now, when we're talking about a distro like Void, like Gentoo, like Arch, the only thing that matters is the current version with the current latest versions of the packages. If your application doesn't work with the older dependencies, it doesn't matter. No one should be using them. But Ubuntu isn't like that, and Fedora isn't like that, and all of these well-maintained point releases are not like that. Not only do you need to update Firefox on 23.04, but let's say there is a big security issue that needs to be backported. This right here is the releases page for Ubuntu. This is the list of supported distros going all the way back to 18.04 LTS. That is still in the regular support period. But there are distros that aren't EOL going back to 14.04. Were things going back to this period getting a lot of patches? No, absolutely not. But if something is mission critical, something is a super serious CVE, if you're supporting it, you're going to go back and backport that patch. And this ends up being a lot of work. So why bother doing all that stuff when you can just upstream check in a YAML file and let CI and CD do the work? You build the package once and it just works everywhere the package needs to work. It's a one-time fix and you're good to go. Now I hear you saying, isn't that just being a lazy developer, a lazy maintainer? Yes. Yes, it is. And in this case, laziness is a virtue. Let's say, for example, you have a task that you run a thousand times a day and you can optimize a second out of that task. Well, the time for that is going to add up really, really quickly. And let's say, for example, you're a package maintainer and you have the option of backporting a patch to every supported version of a distro or... You can have one package that is shipped out to all of those distros, no need to change it for the different distros, and you just patch it once. Which one seems like a more optimal use of your time? I know a lot of people don't like containerization on the desktop, and I'm not saying which one do you prefer as a user. What I'm saying is put yourself in the shoes of the engineer of the package maintainer and think about which one makes more sense for them to go with. 
The idea that correct engineering is to keep the same inefficient processes sounds good on paper, but doesn't align with economic realities. The classic distribution model isn't working for the client, here's why I don't want it to work. So they were saying the reason they're getting rid of the RPM is to spend more time working on HDR support for Wayland and color sensitive work and things like that. I don't know about you, but if a group of people have the skill to implement HDR and the proper color support that we know is a barrier to professionals using Linux, and they're maintaining LibreOffice RPMs this entire time, I wish I could build a time machine to make them drop this two years ago. And while we're at it, we might as well just have anyone involved in doing anything in the critical path to just get rid of that stuff from their lives. The critical path being those major blockers for people actually using Linux or major blockers for Wayland adoption, major blockers for Flatpak adoption, and things like that. Here's how the math works out. The value of distribution providing graphical packages for end users in client Linux is dropping dramatically. It really doesn't matter what distro you're using. If you're using Fedora, if you're using Ubuntu, if you're using Arch, if you're using FlatHub as your primary means of app consumption, you would know this for years now. I could go pretty much move away from Arch. The only reason I'm on Arch is I'm just happy here. I don't change it because I don't need to change it. But if I was going to build like a media center PC, I'd probably just throw whatever on there pretty much because all I really need is OBS and maybe a couple of things like a browser, all of which I can get with a flat pack, no problem at all. When I get to the point where I need to reinstall my OS, like my OS drive dies or something like that, I could very well see myself, you know, using one of the immutable systems, maybe customizing an immutable image to do something myself, maybe chuck Hyperland on there or something, and then fill in the gaps where things can't be done with flat packs using something like DistroBox. I could have all of my regular stuff, like my browser, Office Suite, Steam, all of that inside a flat pack, and then if I want to do stuff from the AUR, which I'm probably still going to do, I could just have Arch in a distro box and go like that. And for a lot of people, this is going to address most of your use cases. Now, I know it's not going to be the case for everyone, and there's always going to be those distros like the Arches, Voids, Gen 2s of the world that are always doing things in the more traditional manner. But there's a lot of these other distros that are deciding to spend their resources in a completely different manner and focus more on this distro-independent packaging. But this is the most important point. This isn't about us versus them. I 100% respect the work distribution maintainers do. I know hundreds of them. That's why they have the most important task of all. They're the ones I trust to talk to the metal. I know I talk sometimes about Arch making a mistake, or this distro making a mistake, or that distro making a mistake, but for the well-maintained distros that everybody knows about, 99.9% .9 of the time, a package update comes in, and it's nothing to write home about. It's not good, it's not bad, it just is. And that's a good thing, but maybe, maybe we don't need them to do all that work. We need to move to a place where we recognize it in a world of limited resources that Linux distributions need to get past boiling oceans of packaging the world. Do what you excel at, providing us with a core desktop operating system with solid foundations. People don't want to hear this, so I'll just say it. Distributions can no longer afford to pretend that they add value by repackaging office suites, by repackaging browsers, by repackaging terminals, by repackaging all of this software that is just being repackaged by every single distro. The real value is in the hard stuff. We need a well-maintained kernel, graphical stack, desktop, and associated core tools. With the package for Firefox, for example, it doesn't matter if it's on Debian or on Arch or OpenSUSE or Alpine or any other distro. It's the same software and the distro isn't really adding anything of value. 
if a project has infinite resources or even just the resources of Microsoft, go ahead, package the entire world and spend money just literally however, just start burning money because it doesn't matter whatsoever. But most projects are not like that. RHEL and Ubuntu are the best funded Linux distros we have, and even those distros cannot afford to do every single thing. There are certain things they need to choose to package and then either not bother with it or leave it up to the community, let alone all of the other distros out there that have even less funding to work with. There will always be a place for Gen 2 Linux where you compile everything yourself. There'll always be a place for Arch Linux where you have the AUR and just random packages out there that nobody would ever use are going to be packaged. Those are always going to have their users, they're always going to have their place, but for the more general desktop, for the place where most people in the Linux world live, and for the place that most distros should be directing their resources, it seems like we are shifting away from that more traditional model and focusing more on the containerization where you have a single package distribution across every single distro. This is basically the universal Linux binary. So for everything else, just punt it to Flathub. Either the developers can package it themselves or other people involved in the Flathub distribution, which is basically what it is, can go and package it for you. But what about LibreOffice? What about your browser? What about this software? What about that software? All distros still need to care about it, but they're not doing it in distro land. The ones doing it right will engage with upstream. So if there's something wrong with the Flatpak package, rather than fixing it on your specific distro and only your distro, you fix it in the upstream Flatpak package that everybody is using. So not only does it fix it for you, it fixes it for everybody else as well. That part doesn't change. What we're not doing is supporting a bunch of different versions across the entire universe. Does moving to this model surface new issues? Yep, and that's why we have things like portals existing now. Are those challenging? Yes. They are taking a while to be addressed and things are slowly being dealt with. Do we need to change how we do business around these packages? Yep. Just because there are also issues with a new model doesn't mean the issues with the old model don't exist, especially in cases where issues with the old model massively outweigh the new model. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The classic model is five people from five different distributions working on a package in their individual distros. The model moves it to five people working on common packaging and not having to deal with all of that toil so they can do more important stuff. Say what you want about Canonical and Red Hat's decision to do this, but at the end of the day, it's all about the number of contributors you have in one hand and the amount of work required to compete in the market in the other. Expect this to happen more often and for the pattern to accelerate because, oh, damn, you got me, this is what happened in cloud. The initial start of getting into containerization was a little bit slow. Nowadays, the web is kind of controlled by containerization. But let me know your thoughts. Do you think this is the direction we're going? Do you think that flat packs and snaps and all of this are just a fad? I would love to know. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Comment section down below. If you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scribes, the Libera Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and flat packs are the present, not even the future. They're here now. Go use them. Bye.